This session is also about factoring trinomials, but this one has a coefficient in front of the x squared, which is kind of different than the last one. It's going to make this process a little bit longer. These aren't as easy to factor as the other ones. But once you get the procedure down, it's the same four-step procedure every single time. Now, before you do that, you need to go back and review grouping, if you don't remember how to do that. So that's about two lessons before this, and once you get that down, you can come back and try this. What we're gonna, because what we're going to do on these is make these four terms so we can factor by grouping. So if you already had factoring by grouping down, this shouldn't be too bad. So, step one. It is multiply the ends together. I'm going to multiply 2 times negative 2. And that gives me a negative 4. So, on the last one where you factored it just a trinomial without the coefficient, you would say what multiplies to this number and adds to this number. Well, now you're going to say what multiplies to the ends multiplied together. So, what multiplies to negative 4 and adds to negative 3. So again, instead of just only using this one, now you're going to say what multiplies to this and adds to this. So, what multiplies to negative 4 and adds to negative 3? So I'm thinking that's going to be negative 4 and positive 1. These two numbers will multiply to negative 4 and they will add to negative 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to split the middle up right here. So that's step 2 split up the middle. Okay, so my two numbers are negative 4 and positive 1, so I'll just rewrite this part. I'm not doing anything with that, but I'm splitting up this middle. I'm going to write it as negative 4x and positive 1x, and then I'll bring that part down too. This part just comes down, this part just comes down. I split up the middle. See, negative 4x plus 1x, those add together and give me negative 3x. So I'm not changing anything, I'm just rewriting this with four terms instead of three terms. So this is the same exact problem, except now I have four terms that I can factor by grouping. You'll remember factoring by grouping. That's step three. So factor with your groups, which means group these two. What do these two have in common? They have a 2 and an x in common. I pull that out. I have an x minus 2 left over. What do these two have in common? They don't have anything in common. So you might recall back in the other lesson, it's not that they have 0 in common, they have a 1 in common. Everything has a factor of 1 in common. I'll write down my positive 1, and then write down what's left. Okay, so that's step 3. Step 4 is factor by groups again, or factor by GCF. Sometimes people call it GCF. Sometimes people call it factor by GCF. What, are the, what is the greatest common factor of these two things now? This one and this one. So they have this x minus 2 in common. Pull that out, write down what's left. And this is left over here, and this is left right here. So there you go. These two things right here, these two binomials, when you multiply them together, you will get this trinomial. So if you weren't sure that you factored it right, you could FOIL this and see if you get the original trinomial. So here's another one. Let's try this one. So this is a trinomial of this form. So what we're going to do is multiply the ends together. 6 times negative 6 is negative 36. So we're going to multiply our ends. We're going to ask ourselves what multiplies to negative 36 and adds to positive 5. So there's a lot of things that multiply to negative 36, like 1, 
times 36, one of these has got to be negative, and that won't add to positive 5. So that's not going to work. 2 times 18, one of them has got to be a negative, because I'm multiplying to a negative number. These don't add to positive 5, so keep going. 3 times 12, one of them is negative. That doesn't add to 5, that'll give me some variation of 9 or negative 9. So how about 4 times 9, that also makes 36. One of these is negative, that will give me either a negative 5 or a positive 5, depending on which one's negative, and that's what I need. So that was step 1. Multiply the ends together and see what multiplies to the ends and adds to the middle, which is this pair right here. So now I will bring this down. I will split up the middle. I need a positive 5, so this will be plus 9x minus 4x. Again, these two numbers came from these two numbers. One of them has to be negative to give me a positive 5. And then I will just recopy the last number. Okay, that was step 2. Step 3 said factor by grouping. So I'm going to group these two together and group these two together. Uh, this has a 3 and an x in common, so I will take that out. Write down what's left, which would be a 2x plus 3. In other words, if I divide each of these by 3x, 6x squared divided by 3x is 2x. 9x divided by 3x is just 3. So I look at these two, what do these guys have in common? They have a negative in common, and they also have a factor of 2 in common, and they both don't have an x, so I can't take that out. So negative 4x divided by negative 2 is positive 2x. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3. Now these two match, so that's a good thing. That means we're doing this right. So that means that this can be factored anyway. You remember the fourth step was to pull this out and write down what's left. If I take that out and write down what's left, I have a 3x and a minus 2. There you go, that's it. If you weren't sure, you could FOIL this. You should get this trinomial back. Real quick, let's go back to that trinomial that looked like x squared plus 5x plus 6. We said all you have to do on these is see what multiplies to 6 and adds to 5, and you'd say, oh, that's easy. 2 and 3 multiply to 6 and add to 5. You should be pretty good at those by now. The thing is, this is a trinomial that also fits this case. It's just that this number is a 1 right here. So if you did not like factoring that the short way, and you just really want to do it the long way, you could still factor these trinomials the same as you factor these kind of trinomials. See, because when you multiply the ends, 1 times 6, you just get this number. And then you would split it up factor by GCF twice, and eventually you would wind up with this. So these can still be done with this method. And if they can't be done with this method on either these trinomials or the other trinomials, that means that you can't factor it as prime.